One of the tools that could help farmers battle herbicide-resistant weeds continues to receive pressure. As we told you this summer, injury issues from dicamba were showing up across the country in non-tolerant soybeans and other sensitive crops. The Nebraska Department of Agriculture says it received more than 80 dicamba-related complaints this year. Missouri briefly suspended the use of dicamba this summer before reinstating it with restrictions. And Arkansas will hold a public hearing in November, after which it may ban the chemical from mid-April through October. Most growers will soon make seed selections for 2018 with uncertainty about dicamba's future or reliability. University of Minnesota Extension weed scientist Jeff Gonzalez recently wrote an article containing his thoughts on weed management in next year's soybean crop. As he said when we talked last week about challenges using dicamba, the renewed interest in the product arose from the continuing struggle against herbicide-resistant weeds. Historically, this chemistry, the dicamba, has always had a volatility issue, but it's been solved with different formulations. The problem is reduced volatility is not the same as no volatility. And uh, the other problem is, is soybeans that are not traded to the resistance trait, the dicamba-resistant trait, are very sensitive to this chemistry. So this has been the evolution of bringing this forward and kind of highlights in my mind that how serious the resistant weed problem is that farmers would take on, you know, what's been somewhat of a riskier compound. There's been a number of farmers that really didn't like using dicamba in corn. And uh, so now the renewed interest again is driven by herbicide resistant weeds. Well, some of those farmers would say as they think about 2018, this is a tool we have to have in order to battle those herbicide resistant weeds. What's the answer to that? Uh, the have to have is, is, a, is a challenging question. And I think what it really speaks to again is the seriousness of this problem. Um, but what it's also highlighting is the fact that uh, the weeds are kind of have a head start on us in trying to address some of these issues. But I think we need to remember that we still have other technologies. We have the Liberty Link soybean technology. We have pre-emergence herbicides, if used at full labels rates, and then tied with effective post-emergence herbicides. That's an effective tool. I really think that uh, we've gotten away from mechanical weed control and other cultural practices like rotating to other crops where we might get better control and reduce that weed problem in the seed bank. All of those things are in play here. Would tighter restrictions on dicamba, so shorter windows that you could use it under certain wind speeds, maybe lower than last year, do you think it's a legitimate option then? Okay, changing how the dicamba is used and, and tighter windows, what that will do is really change the focus of what weeds uh, are going to work best with it. So in other words, giant ragweed, for example, is a common weed that also has multiple resistance. It's an early emerging weed. And so by reducing the window of opportunity to apply dicamba, it should still be a very effective tool for that weed. A bigger challenge would be the palmer and the, and the water hemp because it has a longer emergence period well into mid to late summer. And so that could def definitely decrease its effectiveness in that capacity. It could be part of the solution, but it couldn't be the heavy reliance that I think is perceived by many farmers. You wrote about this thought recently. Some farmers are thinking that they'll plant a dicamba tolerant soybean just as a defensive mechanism for a neighbor who might use dicamba. What is your thought about that? So my take on that is a defensive strategy is, first of all, you're not really addressing the problem. Second of all is that, to me personally, it violates a farmer's right to farm as they choose. So what if you wanted to plant Liberty Link beans and try one of these alternatives? Or if you have organic crops or fruit crops or other food grade crops, all of these things could be affected. The other aspect is, Let's go back in time when we had initial problems with off-target movement of Roundup in Roundup-ready beans to corn. A lot of people would use the Roundup-ready corn as a defensive mechanism. My point here is if you spend the technology fee for this, you're very likely to use the entire technology package. If some of the problems in 2017 were related to, as some companies would suggest, 
improper tank cleanout or using the incorrect nozzles, how do we fix those problems? Well, I think some of those problems are being fixed. I think people, there's been a lot of work by the industry and extension folks around the country. The thing is, is that I think that could go a long way to mitigating some of the problems we had, but it won't eliminate them. There's still the inherent chemistry, the volatility of this chemistry. There's still the challenge of really adhering to the label to reduce those situations. If you had only three ounces of dicamba in a 600 gallon tank, you could still see injury symptomology. Finally, Jeff, you worked with a survey group of producers to learn about their thoughts on herbicide resistant weeds and how herbicides can manage them. Can you explain a little bit about that? I think what it really boils down to is, you know, there's been an extended period of time when weed control in corn and soybeans has been fast, easy, and cheap. The Roundup Ready era was a good 20 year run, but now we're starting to see uh, where we have to make adjustments. And so I think what we're learning from these groups is it's still waiting for the next new Roundup technology to come along to help with this problem. Unfortunately, that is not in the cards in the next 10 years. We have to address the problem as it exists right now. So it's really about working through and integrating other practices that can add value to the existing herbicide resistant crop technology. And so I think we have to look and bottom line is we aren't going to solve this problem of herbicide resistance with herbicides alone. <music>